Earlier this year in July, a strange story broke out where an illegal laboratory had been shut down in California. This laboratory had about a thousand mice that had been experimented on with all manner of diseases. Yet, since this story originally came out, there has been next to no updates on the incident. The story did make the mainstream media. It was covered by Insider, ABC News, USA Today, the New York Post, and Time Magazine. Now, this is far from some outlandish claim made by a blogger or unverifiable anonymous witness. What makes this particularly disturbing is the seriousness of what was found. The lab was reported to have contained mice that had been bioengineered along with samples of diseases like COVID-19, HIV, E. coli, malaria, and herpes. It also contained an estimated 30 refrigerators and freezers, several incubators, as well as a multitude of medical testing supplies. All of this uncovered by Fresno County Department of Public Health. Now, this illegal facility is found to be owned by Prestige Biotech. Now, they had a previous laboratory that was said to have been burned down in a fire, and then they set this one up illegally and transferred equipment and whatnot there to continue operations, but without any go-ahead or regulation by the United States government. Prestige Biotech does seem to have a bit of a questionable history. The company appears to have been created after its predecessor, Universal Meditech Incorporated, went bankrupt. It was a Fresno-based medical equipment manufacturer. Prestige was Universal's largest creditor when the latter filed for bankruptcy. On top of this, according to the San Joaquin Valley Media website, The Sun, Prestige did not have a license to operate, and court documents also reveal the company never contracted with a licensed medical waste hauler, meaning Prestige, never disposed of any of the lab waste legally. Now here is where the story really starts to get strange. Fresno County Public Health Assistant Director Joe Prado told KMPH that the lab was utilizing mice to see if COVID-19 test kits were accurately testing for the virus. Here at the Public Health Department, we operate our own lab, so we are very well versed in the legal requirements and how to maintain and control an infectious agent. There was just a complete absence of those controls in place at the warehouse. Only three days later, the insider reported that Wang Xiaolin, a representative of the company operating the lab, told investors that the mice inside the warehouse had been genetically engineered to catch and spread the COVID-19 virus, and that the CDC and Fresno County Department of Public Health did not immediately respond to the insider's request for comment. Now, the sudden change in story is quite strange, but it doesn't stop there. On August 1st, it was reported by the New York Post that some of the chemicals and infectious agents were stored in bins that included English and Chinese labels, according to photos of the lab released in the court documents. Prestige Biotech is accused of failing to comply with orders, including providing plans for biological abatement and disposal of hazardous materials. A criminal investigation is ongoing. As a result of this, the House Oversight Committee did do a preliminary investigation into the incident and did compile a report that it sent off to the Department of Human Services and to the FBI. Now, here's one of the statements contained within that report. Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic Chairman Brad Winstrup is investigating whether an unlicensed lab in California owned by Prestige Biotech, a Chinese company, as mounting intelligence and evidence supports that COVID-19 likely originated at a lab in Wuhan, China, conducting a thorough investigation into Prestige Biotech's illegal biolab on U.S. soil is crucial to protecting America's national security and preventing future outbreaks and pandemics. This so-called mounting evidence of COVID coming from a Chinese lab doesn't exist. A CIA investigation concluded that they had no evidence that COVID came from a Chinese laboratory. Chairman Wenstrup of the Oversight Committee outright lied in his statement. After searching some records, I was able to determine that Prestige Biotech was created April 3rd, 2019. The registered agent is Barry Zhang CPA Associates, LLC. A registered agent is a business or individual designated to receive service of process when a business entity is a party in a legal action, such as a lawsuit or summons. 
meaning that this individual doesn't own the company, but receives legal paperwork on its behalf. Zhang's CPA and associate's office is in Las Vegas. The company, however, is owned by Prestige Biopharma. That is a company that does exist on the stock market, the KRX in Korea. But the company is headquartered in Singapore under Prestige Biopharma, which is not China. Thus far, a multitude of unverifiable claims have been made that this laboratory is Chinese owned. But as it as demonstrated, there's no actual evidence of any Chinese ownership anywhere in any of the chain of paperwork that has been carried out. In fact, it pretty much seems to be owned by Koreans, not Chinese. Now, the company is headquartered in Singapore, where 75% of the population is ethnically Chinese, and many do carry traditional Chinese names. And this seems to be the source of the claim that somehow China is involved in this, despite the fact that there isn't any actual evidence tying this lab either to the Chinese government or even to a single Chinese individual. This is the real kicker here. Despite everything that has been put out, uh, particularly from all the research I was able to determine, everything from the oversight committee to uh, Time Magazine to conspiracy theory websites, all blame China for this laboratory and the unethical practice that was carried out. But there is no actual connection to China in any way, shape, or form. This is a registered company of Singapore that appears to be owned by Koreans, traded on the Korean Stock Exchange. Now, it is part of a larger biopharmaceutical company, the Prestige Bio pharma. So it's actually a subsidiary of a much larger company that is also heavily connected to Korea, not China. So that while there is very clearly some kind of unethical goings on here, China doesn't have anything to do with it. There is no actual connection to them. Now, this may explain why much of the mainstream coverage of this has been very quiet and has not been spread very far and it has not been done on a repeated loop over and over. Because if there actually was a Chinese bioweapons laboratory found in the United States, that would be on the front page of absolutely everything. But as it stands, that this unethical doing was not done by a Chinese company or even, a, or even a Chinese individual. Now, it was said that one of the people who answered the door spoke in broken English and that they were speaking Chinese, saying that when they were asked who owned the facility, they gave a list of offices in the U.S. and some in China. Those offices in the U.S. turned out to be empty buildings with no one in them. And the offices in China were unverifiable. The authorities could not get to them in order to question what was going on. The strange thing about this is that it seems to be a bit of a translation error on the part of the employee, at best guess, because it is a subsidiary of essentially what is a Singapore company owned by Koreans. Now, this could be uh, any manner of unethical business practices. Now, its predecessor, Universal Meditech has all kinds of recalls coming in from defective products that they had created, some of them even being outright dangerous. And so clearly there was, was a great deal of unethical practice going on. But as it stands, other than them experimenting on mice to test the ability of COVID tests in order to see if they were effective at detecting the virus, there's no actual evidence of anything to do with bioweapons. This appears just to be an illegal pharmaceutical laboratory operating on U.S. soil. And in fact, it was noted by Time Magazine that there were numerous loopholes in U.S. law that allowed places like this to exist. So by far, this is not the only instance where an illegal laboratory like this is operating there's probably a great deal more of them. But 
what's noted is that as I've gone through all of the information that I can find of it, much of it coming purely from conspiracy theory websites, because the mainstream media isn't saying very much, they have all immediately jumped to the conclusion that this is a Chinese bioweapons lab, proof that COVID came from a Chinese lab, of which there isn't any, and that somehow current U.S. President Joseph Biden is part of it and is covering it up, which also they have absolutely no evidence of. One of them even claims it's a Chinese lab while explicitly saying that its headquarters is in Singapore and is traded on the Korean Stock Exchange. The fact is, there's a great deal going on here that we don't know. And I'm sure there's a, a, a lot of unethical practices going on that do merit significant investigation. And I'm sure those investigations are being carried out as we speak. The problem here is, is that what little media is covering it, what little mainstream media is, recovering it, is covering it, is immediately jumping to the conclusion that it's Chinese. The Oversight Committee accused it of being Chinese with no evidence. Time Magazine accused it of being Chinese with no evidence. The Daily Mail said that it was heavily Chinese affiliated, which is a little bit more honest, but it's not because there's no evidence of anything that has to do with China whatsoever. Now, this is one of those situations where you're going to have to get a lot more information before you start making accusations or making wild, baseless assertions. So until that time, we're actually going to have to sit back and watch this situation develop if we get any more information forthcoming. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.